Hello and welcome. I'm Eunice Omanga, a consultant with the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition. I'm here to present on the insights from implementation research on the promising practices related to campaign transition to the primary health care system. This presentation is a follow-up to the introduction in part one, in which we heard about the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition's research and learning agenda and the synthesis methods. Now here I present the six implementation research projects related to campaign transition to the primary healthcare system. Three projects assessed linkages of campaign with primary healthcare system. Two assessed campaigns transitioning to country ownership and one project assessed an intervention that transitioned in recent years to the primary healthcare system to develop supported mechanisms. Of the six studies, two are exploratory and formative while the others were evaluating transition. As you can see, they span several health programs and occurred in Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Ghana, Nigeria, and Vanuatu. You'll hear more about these projects in subsequent slides. I will now present findings from the synthesis of the above six implementation research studies. The studies identified promising practices, challenges encountered, and their proposed solutions, and also measured some outcomes. I'll start with the promising practices that emerged from the studies. 10 promising practices emerged from the synthesis and we have grouped them under four overarching goals or themes. The first two being phase transition and engagement of stakeholders with five of the promising practices are presented here on this slide. I'm going to highlight the first promising practice and promising practice number four. On phase transition, the synthesis revealed that transitioning campaigns requires extensive planning, resources, and time. And so the first promising practice is to develop a phase transition framework. And a good example was the framework developed by researchers in the Cameroon study. The research team developed a conceptual framework for partial integration of ivermectin distribution into the primary healthcare system. This framework describes responsibilities of the different levels and at different time points during the transition. Under inclusive engagement of stakeholders, fostering a purposeful community engagement as an ongoing activity was identified as a promising practice. That is promising practice on our slide here. As an example, the project in Ghana co-developed a community health advocacy team known as CHAT that implemented community mobilization and social behavior change communication on malaria education, specifically prevention strategies. So based on this, social behavior change communication before, during, and after campaign was expected to ensure sensitization of community members. The other two themes are management and strengthening of human resources and efficient information systems. Under management and strengthening of human resources, I'll highlight promising practice number seven. To ensure sustainability and smooth transition of campaigns, it will be necessary to plan for capacity building needs, staff motivation, and ongoing supervision. This was illustrated by the study in Vanuatu, where health workers implementing the mass drug administration received training and job aids for conducting skin exams to enable them to, off, to refer community members with suspected skin lesions to health facilities. It turned out that some cases of scabies were inappropriately referred. This was a good learning for the team and it prompted a revision of the job aids. Thereafter, surveyed health workers in this study reported that more training would make them feel more prepared for this adaptation. Next, I'll talk about promising practice number nine which is to develop and strengthen a reliable data management system on service delivery that includes transition intervention. For example, in the Ethiopia study, while all health facilities had a system to collect and report monthly health, data, uh, monthly health service data, more than half of NTD stakeholders surveyed believed that the existing health management information system did not capture information on NTD on NTD indicators as only three indicators are included in the DHIS2 data capturing and reporting format. This caused difficulties in estimating, 
planning for and offering NTD services. Cote d'Ivoire, on the other hand, identified a system for setting targets and correctly estimating the number of a client for vitamin A supplementation as a promising practice. Now I'll move on to challenges and proposed solutions. The challenges and proposed solutions are grouped under six themes. The current slide presents three of the themes, government commitment and funding, proportionate enumeration, and sociocultural context. Starting with government commitment as a challenge, in three of the studies, governments were not prepared to assume all aspects of health campaigns and therefore sustainability of campaign interventions after transition could not be guaranteed. Respondents in both the Carter Center study in Nigeria and Helen Keller International study in Cote d'Ivoire were apprehensive about the respective government's ability to fully take over the health campaigns. The, the proposed solution to this and even government commitment included advocacy and sensitization, implementation of transition phases as already discussed under promising practices and leveraging resources from other ongoing programs. Moving on to sociocultural context, sociocultural beliefs and needs posed a challenge to transition as they impacted uptake of services. We saw this in the Vanuatu study where some community members were reluctant to give stool uh, samples because they were not sure what it was to be used for. Or in the Cameroon study where respondents were concerned about the risk of use of, uh, of ivermectin. Some community members believe the drug could be used to terminate pregnancy, treat animals, or even used for skincare. The study in Cameroon explored feasibility of extending availability of ivermectin at the facilities for a period of time following campaigns. The main solution to the sociocultural barriers was to engage the community members so as to promote awareness and education and to dispel myths and misconception and misinformation. The last um, three, uh, three, the last three themes under challenges were coordination and communication, information system, and supply management. The synthesis found that lack of a well-organized information system to avail reliable data for decision making was a challenge. Stakeholders in a consultative workshop in Ethiopia study identified a failure to apply standardized and integrated monitoring and supervision system as a challenge. Related to this, respondents in Nigeria emphasized the need for monitoring and evaluation to ensure resources were appropriately allocated. Consequently, having in place a monitoring and evaluation system to inform decision-making coupled with close supervision were some of the proposed solutions. Now I'll move on to outcomes, and I'll take you through some of the outcomes measured in the transition implementation research studies. The outcomes measured included campaign uh, transition coverage, referral from campaigns to health facilities, linkage of campaigns to multi-disease, zero surveillance, disease prevalence estimation, and acceptability of transition or linkages to primary healthcare system. On this slide, we present coverage on interventions delivered. Now, the study in Nigeria assessed coverage for two interventions. Um, in the first, post-campaign survey data showed that coverage of mebendazole for treatment of soil transmitted health needs remained stable. That is, prior to the transition, it was about 81%, but after transition, it slightly dropped to 75%, though the difference was not significant. On the other hand, for schistosomiasis, Coverage for the medication presicental decreased from 72 to 55%, and in this case, the difference was significant. Still on outcomes, the study in Vanuatu measured three different outcomes as prepared, uh, presented on this slide. We start with referrals from campaign site to health facilities. Now, in this study, suspected cases of skin diseases were identified during the integrated mass drug administration, and about 5% were clinically confirmed as having severe skin diseases and referred to the health facilities. This included 12 cases of yours confirmed with assay that also received treatment. Regarding linkages to multi-disease serosurveillance, specimens were collected for surveillance where 
83% of the targeted sample of mass drug administration beneficiaries gave dried blood spots. However, only 20% of the targeted beneficiaries gave specimen for stool test. On estimation of disease prevalence, soil transmitted health prevalence was found to be high in the study communities. Among those who gave stool samples, uh, 40, about 47% tested positive for ascariasis, 43% for trichoriasis, and 25% for hookworm. Our last slide on outcomes, we look at acceptability of transition or linkages to primary healthcare system as assessed in Ghana and Vanuatu studies. The Ghana project introduced the community health advocacy team known as CHAT as an intervention to continue social behavior change after the long lasting insecticide treated net mass distribution campaigns. Participation in CHAT activities was found to be correlated with greater community acceptance because majority of the community members surveyed found the chart intervention acceptable, appropriate, and feasible. In Vanuatu, an online survey found that health workers highly accepted the addition of skin exams to the integrated mass drug administration. Now on this slide, we share with you the top three knowledge gaps that emerge from the scene states. The first one is to test the impact of specific transition strategies on routine coverage of interventions and the cost effectiveness. Now, the success of different campaign transition strategies will depend on the local context among other factors. There can be no one size fits all, hence the need to test the impact of different transition strategies on routine intervention so as to determine their effectiveness on coverage. The next knowledge gap is identifying strategies to strengthen training and supply chain to support campaign transition and maintain coverage with minimal or no external support. So the implementation research studies revealed cross-cutting challenges, including over-dependence on external funders like international NGOs. There is therefore a need to strengthen government's capacities to manage key transition elements, such as training, supply chain, management, and advocacy, et cetera. And the final gap is the need to determine optimal time and stages required for successful transition. So implementation of a phase transition program was identified as one of the solutions to the challenges of an, of an even government commitment. However, different time frames and elements will be needed based on the epidemiology and the local contents. So this should be established for each scenario. Um, and here on this slide, we share with you some ways that campaign managers could use the findings from this synthesis. I'll go ahead and highlight three of them. First, Campaign managers can assess their campaign programs readiness for primary health care system. They can also use local structures to engage communities, dispel needs, and increase awareness and acceptance of campaign transition. Campaign managers should also ensure key indicators are included in the health management reporting system. And now I would like to acknowledge here the six implementation research teams led by the listed project teams, their ministries of health, as well as the different government agencies in the six countries. We also wish to acknowledge the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition governance and the groups that assisted HCE like Campaign Integration Working Group, Scientific and Technical Advisory Committee members, and all task force um, for global health staff that supported the project. Last but not least, we wish to acknowledge HCE funders, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, we now invite you to learn more on the project's briefs and the synthesis report by visiting campaigneffectiveness.gov.org. Thank you for listening and have a good day.